We've got choices now for managing frontline metastatic pancreas cancer. And so it really falls on us to work with our patients to understand what is the best, say, frontline therapy. And uh, when I approach this, I think about a three drug cocktail, the Fulfirinox regimen, or a two drug cocktail, the Nabpaclitaxel and Gemcitabine regimen. And we have to remember that they're not very different in how well they work but they are very different in how well they're tolerated. And so there tends to be this drive to say, well, in a very good performance status patient with a lot of support, I'm gonna go with the three drug regimen first because I can. Um, and so we tend to favor that, but uh, I do really think we have to have a good discussion with our patients. What is their level of support? How will they do with a home infusion, Metaport, uh, pump at home? Uh, neuropathy, the oxaliplatin neuropathy is immediate and significant. The nabpaclitaxel um, neuropathy is later and cumulative and, and fades. So you want to make that decision. I think it's even harder in a case like this where it's sort of localized disease where you think you might maybe just convert a patient to resectability. Now, we have to remember our case, they found liver metastasis, so we're probably not gonna go to surgery. But there are a lot of times of locally advanced pancreas cancers where we still cross our fingers and if we get a good enough response, we might take them to surgery. And here, we tend to wanna to go to three drug cocktails, but quite honestly, the two drug cocktail performs very nicely in that setting too. So it's working with your patient, understanding what their support is, what they're willing to put up with and making your best clinical judgment. So when a brand new pancreas cancer patient comes to see us in clinic and has metastatic disease and we're trying to really set expectations, what are our goals, how are we gonna go forward, what are our expectations of treatment, I really do start with some language around um, the severity of the disease, that this is a serious cancer, that it is life-threatening. Most of them, honestly, have done a little clicking already so they know something about what they're facing but I just want to level set with them where we are. Uh, we want to manage their symptoms, tell them we're going to take care of them forever, um, and make sure they're doing the best they can. And then we turn to the sort of positive side of this, and that is we've got new treatments. And those treatments by themselves are not curative. I, I often will use language of the only way we know to cure this disease is through surgery, and then sort of say, but you've got too many spots for surgery. So I don't actually say you can't be cured, but I let them figure it out on their own. Maybe I'm just a chicken and should just come right out and say it, but they understand what I mean by that. Um, and then with that, we talk about survival and we talk about the positives and the impact of treatment. And um, I usually dive right in to discussing the regimens that are used. Um, the, the two main regimens are the three-drug regimen, Fulfirinox, and the two-drug regimen, Napaclitaxel um, and Gemcitabine. And I usually start with the three-drug regimen. Um, I describe what a Metaport is, how one is put in, why it's a nice thing to have. Um, I then describe the regimen in some detail, how much time, how often they come, what are the side effects, and this takes some time. And I really feel that it's important for us to take this time. Different practices do this differently. Sometimes uh, doc practices will have their nurse practitioner or their nursing corps do the describing uh, of that. But I actually think it's really important for the doc uh, to sit down with a patient and try and describe what it's going to be like, how they're gonna feel, not just the two days on the treatment, but a week later. And, how many good days, how many bad, because that patient is having to make some decisions about their life. If they're working, for example, can they continue to work? If they're gonna need a ride back and forth from treatment. And they're doing all of that math while we're describing you know, this neuropathy and that nausea, et cetera. Um, we also have to remember that almost everything we tell a patient, particularly on that first visit, they forget or they didn't hear. And so if there's not somebody sitting right next to them writing everything down or they're recording you on their iPhone, 
then make sure that they get written information. Tell them you're going to discuss it again uh, with them in detail because they will have forgotten a lot of the detail uh, that you think they've gotten. So first I describe the three drug regimen in some detail and then I say or behind curtain number two we have a two drug cocktail and then I actually go into not only the specifics of the two drug regimen but how they're different. Why would anybody pick three versus two and why do we think that there's a little bit of uh, superiority to the three drug regimen than to the two? And I describe actually the clinical trials, how one was done versus how the other was done, saying that that's really not quite a fair fight when we do comparisons. Um, and I essentially tell patients that there's not much difference clinically in outcome between the two drug regimen and the three drug regimen. If I have a patient where they're very symptomatic, a lot of tumor burden, um, hurting from it, and they're young enough and fit enough, that's a patient I'll try the three drug regimen in because I want every percentage point of response I can get in that patient. But for me, almost everybody else, I'll tend to use the two drug recipe uh, as initial lines of therapy, mainly because I find the Fulfirinox regimen, for all the machismo out there, I find the three drug regimen difficult to give to patients over a long haul. So in summary, I spend the time, I describe the two regimens in detail um, and so that they have a pretty clear understanding. And then of course what happens is, is the patient says, well, what would you do? And I'm like, oh God, I don't know what I would do. So I then do a gut check and think, what would I do if I was sitting over there and make the recommendation to the patient going forward?